Hi, Sportster Paul here. We've got some iron Sportster ignition systems, actually back to K model, 1952 to 1984. We're going to go over them, talk about problems I've had, maybe educate you a little. So there's two basic types of ignition systems. Ones that fit this old cover, started in 1952, and it changed a lot over the years. They don't all interchange, you've got to be careful. But this camshaft cover, it's People call it a distributor, but it's really not because it doesn't distribute spark like in your V8 motor. The, the factory calls it a circuit breaker. A lot of us just call it a distributor. It goes in here and life is good. We'll get into details about those. In 1971, they switched to what they call, popularly we call, the cone motor. Because huh, it's a cone, right? You got the spot, uh, sky cam here, right? See the cone? I got the one cam here that this mounts, that takes this kind of stuff here, right? So K model, auto advance, then 71 here. I think the auto advance came in at 65, 71, 79, one year only, and then 80 and whatnot, they've got the, the modern one, very similar. They actually put a vacuum switch in, I think what, 82 or 83, maybe 83. So we'll go over these. The old stuff, like so often, seems to work best. You know, we're not trying to be, you know, old timers and stuff. This circuit breaker came out of my 1952K model, sitting over there. It's rusty, it's grungy. Let's uh, show you. Oh, I should mention, it's got this little gasket here. And the theory is this little gasket goes down on this boss here. Can you see it? Right there. It's got the two holes for these two screws. And then this has two, and, and this base part here is screwed down hard. Doesn't, doesn't swivel at all. A cable goes in here up to your left handlebar, which used to have internal cables in them and up until 64 or 5. And you could turn it, and when you do that, it rotates. See, the, I'm holding the bottom steady, but the top part is moving. The gear, of course, isn't going anywhere. The bike's standing still. So the theory is you, advance, you retard it so when you kick it, it doesn't kick back and you know, bang your knee or whatever. So that makes it easy to start with full retard. Then as you start, once the engine started almost, you can bang it into full advance. And that keeps you from burning up valves and burning up pistons and burning up spark plugs because the more advanced you can get a motor to run on without knocking under heavy load, the better off you are. So you can trade off higher rated gas and more advanced. You'll get better mileage, you'll get more power, all that good stuff. Now, sportsters need an insane amount of spark advance. You know, above the top dead center of the piston, the early ones, 45 degrees. And I think that's uh, 700, out of 720, two, two rotations, but 45 degrees. And here's the problem. Here's, here's the piston we took out of that 82 in the earlier shows. Here's a Sportster piston, and they all kind of, they used to be 900 cc instead of 1,000, but they all look like this. Let me go to the side cam here, and you can see, let me focus the side cam, there. And, and you can see, you know, it's got this huge dome on it, right? How can I show it? Can you see it? It's even got a little nick right here to let the valve. So when they designed the overhead valve Sportster, the K model was flathead. Then in 57, they went to overhead valves. Back then, even though they should have known better because it was after World War II, the theory was to get power out of an engine, you make it breathe. How do you make it breathe? Big valves. How do you get the valves bigger? You tilt the intake and exhaust at a 90 degree angle. So that way, as you tilt them up, you can see the heads can get bigger and bigger, right? because you, you, you've got this big tilt on them. And it was true, you know, those big ports and big valves, the engine will breathe better as an air compressor maybe. But what they didn't understand back then, which I put the, the, the big epiphany to me in the auto business was the 70s, 1970, the 440 wedges Chryslers ran better than the 426 Hemis. Because the Hemis had this thinking, you know, big valves at a big angle. The wedges had two valves side by side and then what they call a squish area. 
So when the piston comes up and it hits that squish, it tumbles the, the thing, and when you light it, it burns quick, so you don't need 45 degrees of advance, because you know, when you spark advance, you're fighting. You're, you're doing just what you don't want to do. You're pushing down on the piston as it's coming up. But you get so much more, by the time it comes up and gets full pressure, then you get more on the way down and you end up with more power. But the other problem with doing it this way, the surface area of the top of the piston is immense. So all kinds of heat goes into the piston. So it runs hotter. So it's got to be clearance looser and all these other issues. So because of this big advance thing, since you need so much advance, if you went to kickstart with 45 degrees of advance, you know, you'd never get it, get it to go over the top dead center. So they had the little turny handle and this point set up. Let me bring it over to the side cam. I'm so happy I set this up for you folks. Here it is, right? It doesn't have any advance other than, you know, you, you hold the base and you turn this. These two screws hold it in here and here. And then which way you put it in, where, you, where do you want the wire here for the, uh, for the coil to come out? It's got this bale I've always called, these, you know, a wire bale that goes in. There's two sets of holes, so I'm not sure what the design intent is. But what took a while to figure out is that bale seems to, to captivate the top and the bottom, right? So you get a screwdriver under it. Ah, I'm not showing you anything. Pry it out, pry it out, get the bail out. Then there's this little spring washer thingy, which I'm not even sure I've got installed right. I'll have to, and the Harley K model forum. They also got parts books. We'll show you some parts books and stuff on the Harley K model forum. This pops out and I'm almost positive these bail wire ends, you know, go through these holes and pivot it. I had to use a little of my croil, croil, the oil that creeps, you know, I love this stuff. Don't use WD-40, it attracts water and rusts everything. And fine, it's still a little tight. So here it is, here's the, here's the two parts, right? Here's the base with the shaft, it's all rusted. This will be a fun thing to take to our little bead blaster setup so that we can see how much we can clean this up and if we can make it work. It's a pretty light duty thing, but of course if it's got sharp edges, it's going to grind away the, the ignition points. So just a simple shaft, that gasket fits, do I have it handy? I've lost it already. Here it is. You know, the gasket fits down like this. Life is good. So the base, ultra simple, right? Simple is good in automotive. Here's the, uh, the breaker, condenser. I'm not sure, I know the later model, the cone motors, it's the same as a six cylinder Chevy points. These might be different. They look similar, but you know, there's, here is an adjustment so you can turn it, adjust it. This is a slot, you know, you loosen this, you adjust it, set this, set this dwell. Let's look at these, can you see them? People think points are bad, see that silvery? These points are fine. I mean, they're grungy and rusty, but that's another problem. But if you lubed it all up and got, you know, got this thing going, those points are still serviceable. The condensers are what tends to go bad because they're electrolytic capacitors and they leak. So this worked and was reliable. Let's put it together like this. This camera's almost too close to show you what's going on. And there's a trick I remember. Oh yeah, so then this slot here, right, lines up with this. And then this thing moves too, right? You can, this is how you adjust the overall timing to get, and, and like, because what's critical is that it's running at full advance when you want it. Did I get this right? You get to watch my real time suffering. It's not in. I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. Still not in. There we go. Now it's all the way in, right? That little happy pop. And this thing, I'm not sure even how it goes. I, I assume it goes so that the, the bale lines up. Let's, let's get it here on the sky cam. It's just, Pull the bale right across. And then there's a chrome cap that goes over and you snap the bale just like a master cylinder. I'll be putting this back on my 1952. So let's get that out of the way. Works good. And if I believe the book, it works all the way till 1964 or five. Now, how do you know that is the parts books. So 
I told you about these before. Here's the, uh, what's this? Oh, this is the service manual that I looked up to try to figure out how to get that thing apart. Here's a pair of parts manuals. This one here, Skycam, uh, it's trying to, it says 1954 through 78. It really, they tried to make a comprehensive parts manual. If you buy one, well, this isn't a bad one to start with. And then you can see I got the coils and the stuff. I don't want to violate Harley's copyright. They got too many lawyers. And then here's the later model, the 79 to 85 parts catalog. Cost a lot of money, but worth every penny. And then, because I've got 62, here's all these other parts catalogs, right? Parts catalogs. Parts catalogs, all the way back to the 50s for K-Model. And that's why the, the folks at Harley K-Model website have done such a great job. They've got some of these that, thanks to Harley Davidson, they're allowed to reprint and you can download PDFs of some of these older parts books. I don't think these new ones you can get, but maybe to the mid 60s kind of sportster, you can get all, they've put all that, not quite open source, but so you can get it. Okay, so let's get back set up so we don't violate copyright. We'll put this pad here. And, oh, this was for the piston. I see the two little circlip rings. Somebody was complaining about spiral locks. You know, they're, they're like a little spiral of spring steel that you wind in. Those I never use over again. So we'll get that back. This is the really useful box that I told you about. I got from Staples. You get a three pack for 70 bucks. They're expensive, but because of the strength, you can stack them 10 high. So a lot of this stuff was in the ignition box. I'll get it back. Okay, so one of the things with this earlier cover where it, it, you know, a distributor, if you will, a circuit breaker goes in from the top here, or a magneto. I'm not even gonna talk about magnetos. You know, I, I had a magneto bike and I kicked it 30 times and I, I ran it for years and I just gave up because now that I converted it over to points and that, it starts on two kicks usually. It was in warm, it starts one kick. So, magnetos, that's a whole nother show. I gave all mine away. I gave my last magneto to Preacher. So this is the kind of cam. Can we show it over here? Right, it's got this spiral, and that spiral, let me show it over here, you know, goes in this way, and that's what drives. And this is the cam that's driven directly off of the crankshaft. So there's not, you know, there's not slop, like they're going a couple down. So the, in 65 or so, this is an auto advance uh, circuit breaker. I just barely get this screw off. This is a cool guy one. You go over here and get this little side screw off because it's got a tack drive on the top, a mechanical tachometer drive. This one I happen to know is broken because on the inside, it's just got this little nub here and it's supposed to have a nice big nub that goes down. This should be a square drive. This might not be the right part. It, in other words, that little nub fits into the end of this shaft, which is the thing. And then that passes on here, right? So auto advance, you can tell. First you can, it's, it's just different, right? It's got the O-ring down here. It's just different. But hear that, hear that rattling? That's because there's advance weights built in. So you could hold this end and turn and you can actually feel, you could feel the springiness. And I thought about taking one of these apart. Well, let's do that, let's do that real time. Now we got a, we got a job, three eighths, no, is it? Yeah, I guess 3 8 kind of works. I don't think they are 3 8 though. Can you see what I'm doing here? These. Now, these, you don't have to have the cable. You don't have to turn anything. It's just when you start the bike, it's retarded because that's how the springs inside and flyweights hold it. And when it, the bike starts, things start spinning in there. It automatically advances, hence the auto advance. Looks like the exact same points, exact same condenser. Come on. I meant to at least try this. I had to rehearse a little for that for that K model. I didn't know how that one came apart. 
I've been into these before, so I was a little more confident to not practice. And so how's it going to come apart? Like that. Okay, so you got the two halves. Here's the advanced mechanism. Can you see that? Not if I don't focus. Oh, come on, here. And it looks similar than this later, later model stuff, right? As it spins up, you can see these weights fly out. And when they fly out, they take this thing, which has got a slot. It only goes in one way, right? That's all cool guy stuff. That ain't the way. Turn it 900. Uh, as you go out, this doesn't quite feel like as smooth as it should. There we go. That's what I was doing. Huh? Right? So, you, so it starts spinning. These weights fly out. It changes the, it, it, it moves this end piece, right? Because it's got this little camshafty thing. So that does your advance and retard. Whoopee. Good stuff, right? Here's the points. Like I said, similar to that. This is when things were cool, right? They didn't have a lot of money. They couldn't afford to change things every year like they do now. Obsoleting stuff. And there wasn't as much regulation and other hassle in Harley's defense. So this one works a little different. You know, it's got an O-ring down here, but it fits in this same case. Let me start this. Prevailing torque nuts. I don't know if that is factory or not. I don't like prevailing torque nuts. You have to, a little, a little 60 weight in that mechanism where the flyweights spin. But this flyweight setup, which is exactly identical in, in appearance to the one we're going to show in the cone motor, which doesn't work, this one works. And I didn't understand for the longest time why that was. There's two holes on, on this, and there's two holes in this. And I'm not sure why, but they line up. It's got this Mickey Mouse slot here to get the wire through. Right? So you line the holes up. One of them was, let me get rid of this wrench. Wrong, right. And the old straight slot screw, right? A little bit of history there. Some guys like the old timey straight slot all galled up. It's authentic, it's 1960s. So here it fits this cover, goes in the same kind of hole, I think it'll I don't know if it's relieved down here and it'll fit the, the uh, K model, but certainly the K model fixed one will fit on this cover because they did run this cover for a while. And I may not be able to get this past here. You got to take these two little screws. The way this one, well, don't rush. Okay, so we got this little screw and we got this little screw. Let's take the cam so it doesn't fall on my foot. Then goes in and should just pop. Oh, it makes that wonderful pop. And then if I remember right, these two screws, there's, there's a little clamp deal, right? You take the base and turn it to rough time it and then clamp it. And the thing about timing it, because advance is so critical, right? A couple of degrees will make a big difference in the way your bike runs and how much power it has. Once it gets over idle, right? Those weights have flown out at, I don't know, 2,000 RPM, 1,500. Timing is critical, and that's why it's really worth taking the uh, plug out of the crankcase. And I have one of those clear things. I don't know if I can find it real quick. I used to be more organized. Until I got a new toolbox. Here it is. One of these plugs, right? These clear plugs. And this threaded part screws in, and then you can hit the timing light here, and you're not getting oil. Other guys just say, well, I'll take an oil bath this week, and they'll put the, they'll leave the hole open so they can see and get their timing light all wet. Duncan had a great timing light where it had a degree change, so you could adjust it on the back of the timing light to find that mark, figure out where it was going, then he was good enough he could go and turn the ignition stuff to get it timed. When you time it, you've got to be over 2,000 RPM in most of the books, but read your book, read your service manual. In other words, the weights are out, it's fully advanced, that's the critical most of your driving, and that's where you want that timing mark 
I mean, like I said, I like advancing it more if it doesn't ping or knock. Once it starts knocking, and some folks can't hear the knock, it, you know, you can really blow up a motor. But at least nominal, put it there, and then the 45 degrees of advance is built into that little weight and that little turny thing, right? Life is good. Camshaft, back in here. Let's get this guy way over here. So then, 1971, the cone motor. They want the big bikes cone motor. This will apply. I didn't understand why these weights wear out so easy and, and get ruined and, and break your motor so much with a cone, whereas my 62 that runs one of those just goes and goes and never, you know, the, the weight, you could see the weights there. They were fine, right? They weren't all sloppy like we're going to show you in a second. I took a class on servo systems for machinery at Delta Tau Data Systems in Northridge, California. They explained to me a servo system, and that's what this flyweight business is, right? It's balancing uh, weights flying out under speed. The faster it goes, the quicker the weights go out to control the spark. It's a servo mechanism. They said trying to compensate and write software and do anything when there is constant acceleration on your system is really, really hard. You think about it, gravity isn't a force. It's a acceleration, 32 feet per second per second. So whereas the reason Chevy put them like this, right, in your Chevy distributor is because it doesn't cause near as much problems as when they lay them on their side in the cone motor. I think it's just a fundamental design error, right? They're putting a constant acceleration on these weights, uh, so the forces are going crazy, because where is, is the w weight subject to gravity this way? Is it subject? So I think they hump a lot, but that's why these cones are nothing but trouble with these mechanical setups, okay? Here's, here's a bunch of them. Here, here's a, a working setup, okay? Let me get the camshaft out of the cone. This is what came out of that 1982 we're working on. There's a little groove here. Right? In, in the end, and a quarter 28, fine thread, quarter inch, and then there's a little pin down here, and you turn it, and you can feel it pop in. I should, there, see, it popped in, it went flush, right? So you got to get that right, and you screw, you know, it takes a 9 16th head, don't moose chow lock it, don't get a big wrench and bend them off, more like a screwdriver. Do not lock tight it in, you know? Because the, fit, the one time I had to push my bike is when this stud broke off. And thankfully, I'm an anti-seize guy, right? Permatex anti-seize. So even though the bolt was broken off, let me show you here, pretty much inside this little thing, it broke in a little spiral, you know? And that, I was able to take a scratch all up in Reno at JC's place and work it out. And once I got it out, we went to the Reno Harley dealer and they said, boy, we sell a lot of those. The girl said, yeah, they sure do. Why do they break? Well, you know, what, what snaps this bolt off? Let's show you. Okay, we're gonna put this back together. Just like I like working out of the box, I like getting stuff together as soon as I can. Okay, if you've got a points ignition bike, a cone motor bike with mechanical points, You've got to open it up. You can mark the, the plate that holds this stuff, right? It's got these, it's got this kind. Oh, there's two of them here, right? That go in like this. Let me show you over here, right? So you, so you can mark, oops, mark the plate to the, to the inside of the cone. Paint, like I showed you, these Dykem, uh, uh, that's a big one. Let's get a little one. This little Dykem paint pen, this white paint. So you mark it, so you know, you know, it's any idiot. You can take it apart, just put it back together the same way and not lose whatever fell out. Some little washer, we'll get that after the show. Pull it out and look on the back of the plate, okay? Notice how this plate is all chewed up. It's got these big grooves, you can feel them. See that? Notice this plate is pristine. Notice this plate, which is the right side, D. 
divots are in here. So this is, no, no this is the top. This is the bottom because <clears throat> these little bumps for the condenser, right? Pristine, no problem. What does that? Well, I think how you ride, like I do a lot of around town. So I'm always going off the, off the advance, on the advance. Those weights are working a lot. They, uh, the design, is there one taken apart? Here's one. So here's the base piece, right? Here's one of the weights. Oops. <laughs> These are all broken. Okay. Here's one of the weights. They put a roll pin here. And then the size of this hole, it's all calibrated. So you get your 40 or 45, some, depends what year. And then this goes in like this, right? If I can make it work. Yeah. Right? So, so there's your motion. But the problem is, when you go out, you're stopping this at this pin, which is down below, right? You're, you're not stopping it here. So that's trying to twist this thing, right? As it flies out, and you can see this one's a little egged, right? See that motion? Let's show you some of the other ones. Here's one that's meant to be better, right? It's improved. They put these little flat washers here thinking that's how we'll fix this problem. Look at this one. Can you see that? I'm trying to get a good angle for you folks. All over the place. Maybe if we show it by the side, because that, that's the deal. When they fly out, they fly up, right? Up and out. And when that happens, these weights, here, you can see this one. See this damage here? That's because it's been hitting the back of the plate. Oh, yeah, here, here it is. Here, here's full failure mode, right? Goes out and then cocks because it's being stopped at the bottom. It's not in line. And it does that. And that whacks the back. That back the tips of these start wanging into the back of the plate. And eventually, that snaps off the quarter 28 9 16 head bolt. I always carry an extra one of these that I've used with the condenser that I know is good. Carry it in the saddlebag of my 79. Or I'm sorry, my 77. That's what I've been driving most days. The 77, here's a picture. I got a Dyna that I used for a while and then had problems with. Uh, so I put a mechanical setup, got the bike running, because that I understand how to do mechanical things. It's been running so good, I still haven't, Put, switched over and put that uh, Dyna ignition in there. The problem with all the aftermarket ignitions, we'll talk about them. I got a crane here, a, a Dyna, Dyna S, which I think is a crane S now. Maybe they sold, I don't know. Most of them don't have enough advance for a Sportster. Sportsters want, you know, an old one wants 45 degrees of advance. Now, you can't cheat the advance side, right? You can't let the bike run more retarded so that it's easy to kick, but then it runs retarded because that'll burn a piston, burn a valve, blow up your motor. Don't do that. So, you, so if you can't get enough advance out of this electronic stuff, what that means is you get the RPM up, you know, 3,000 something, use your light, get the mark at least where you can live with it, you know, dead set or even more advanced if you're like me with good gal, use alcohol-free gas. And then when you go to kickstart the bike, and I'm assuming everybody likes kickstarting bikes, if it doesn't kick back, well, you've got enough advance, but you might have a lot of kickback problems. What I've tried, and I'm sorry I can't report on this just yet, that ignition in the 77 has got this VOES, vacuum operated engine switch. I forget what the E is. And that dials in and takes out advance. So the th now some of them just bring the advance on quicker. Eh, you don't really gain that much. I am hoping I can have it so I flip that switch so that it takes the advance off, start the bike, and then click the switch on once the bike is running and get into a more aggressive advance. It might work. It might not. But like I say, if, if I, I pity the guys with custom and hot rod and high compression bikes because just getting the factory ones to work is tough enough. So here's all these broken, broken ones. See the sky cam? So all of these I've chewed up over the years. I tried to fix it. I'm a smart guy, I'll fix it. So I invented these little cups. See this cup? 
I said, well, if stopping it with that hole screws things up, I'll fix that by stopping it with this little edge. It, it, this fits into the cone. Okay. This fits into, the, oh, you can't see it. I'll show you maybe on the sky cam. Right? This fits in the cone, just barely. Clears that, spins. Well, failure, complete failure. I paid a machine shop a couple hundred bucks to make four or five of these. The problem with this thing is this hard steel, like a bell, the weights go out and hit it, and then they start slapping around and the bike's all over the place. So that was a failure. Here, here's one put together, right? And you know, it's meant, all this is dialed in, so it's meant to take the same uh, outside thing, one of these, right? Like that. I should note this thing, let's find a working one. There's a little pin can't even see it. I think it's on the top side here. But that pin dials in with this flat that they've cut here so you, so you don't put it in backwards. See, it didn't go in down all the way here. Turn it 180, now it goes down all the way. Because it matters, right? There's, because it's a 45 degree you know, deal. That's the other thing we should talk about, single and dual fire. These are wasted spark. Factory Harleys are wasted spark single fire, am I saying that right? I think so. One spark, the coil, it's, it's wound so that it's got a high voltage part for each of these uh, spark plugs. But when it whacks, it's doing the cylinder you want and then the other cylinder will either be on the exhaust stroke or in the crossover where it's not enough air fuel to, to light off if you've got it close. Oh, another thing, I'm a little rambling, right? The little thing that you run. You can see that picture of my, I leave it open. I'd rather have it open and cool. I've run it in the rain. Certainly with these aftermarket electronic ones I'm gonna show you, definitely I think it's best to keep them open. I'm surprised people just don't recommend it. I don't see what's, what could possibly be bad about having air in there cooling down these modules, which hate temperature, right? All electronics hates temperature. So, okay, this is my little failure. So, we'll file that over here. Now, this is 71 to 78. To show you how the motor company can kind of be the motor company, in 1979, one year over only, they went to this little thing. This goes down where that plate does the, it takes the same horrible flyweights that bang into the back of the plate, break off, snap, cause all of that. And then instead of that lumpy cam, it's got this sharp, right? Because that dials in with the, uh, with the sensor, right? And I bet if we had a little piece of steel, I wonder if this is Hall effect. Huh? Should be. I don't feel a magnet there, but, so 79, the module, the electronics are in the cone, like these aftermarket ones we're gonna talk about. That's not good, because it gets hot. You notice the modern motors we're gonna talk about, they only put a sensor in the cone. The electronics is in a module that mounts on the frame under your butt. So it's got electronics here. The electronics aren't sophisticated enough to do advance and retard. They let the old stupid flyweights do that in 1979. In addition, this goes, I think, over, right? This fits like this. So this goes on the top, and then they do something goofy where there's another plate. Here's, here's a plate, let's see. See, here's the same gasket. It's, it's even carryover, it's even got the holes in four places, right? So they carried over the gasket. Here's where I drilled out rivets. Oh, this is CCI. This is not never factory, right? Lived around. And there's the rivets I drilled out, I think. So it goes like that. And all this mess goes together. And I think some of the stuff is actually riveted. You know, they say, oh, you'll never have to get in there. It's just a pain. 79. Oh, the other problem with 79, got to use resistor wires and I think even resistor spark plugs because the electronics being so marginal, so early in the electronic days, so hot, 
running so hot and high vibration, it can't take the copper solid, solid core spark plug wires or non-resistor spark plugs. I'm back real quick, a little bonus footage. Because I was trying to design that ignition before I gave up because Crane and everybody else does it better, I broke apart a 79. Let's go here and see. Let me play with the focus. There we go. Is that coming in? So this is that 79 torn apart. And you can see it's got film capacitor there, probably resistors or diodes, a chip, which I've never been able to read what it is. I'll look that up for you. And then here's the power transistor instead of the points, right? So all that being in the module, it can work, but good luck. All right, back to the show. So then we finally get, I think it would be 1980, the modern thing, which is this little cone. And see, there's no electronics here. There's just this sensor, right? They even try to help you with the degree wheel. I'm not even sure if this is big bike or sportster or what. I probably got a flea market. This one, you can, right? This is magnetic, so it's Hall effect. Some of the aftermarket stuff used optical, optical running hot, you know, the, the LED inside wears out, not as good. Uh, more, I think it's just more robust. But then this is all that's in your cone, right? I happen to have some new, here, here's a new one. Let's see, genuine Harley Davidson, stock ignition rotor, 1980 up. CCI distributing, oh, 32402-83. And you hold it on with this one, I guess it's a 2611B, this, Custom chromes in San Jose, so I always like them. Ignition rotor screw. And so this is the funky screw. I've never had them loosened. Same deal, I put the anti seize on these. I don't lock tight them in. So now you've got a module. The, the first couple years, they didn't have that VOES switch in the, in the manifold to do like a vacuum advance like Chevy's have had for 40 years. And then the module got a little more sophisticated and an extra wire, uh, I don't know, 83, 84. Fortunately, I suspect you could put all of that stuff back on an old 1971, right? This fits on the camshaft, right? It, it, it picks up this slot here and that little dimple, right? See? Picks it, picks it up, puts it in, life is good. It's, it's not as clean, right? You got a module and you got wires and all of that stuff. This is nice, you run one wire down to the points and off you go, right? So, aftermarket. I didn't, until I got ready for this show this morning, I didn't even know I had some of this stuff. I thought it was a Crane S, but this is a Dyna S, okay? Once again, electronics, Inside, you know, this goes to power in the coil, and there's a third one, I'm not sure, it might have a VOS. No, I don't think it does, because, right, it's got this set up here, and it's just meant to go on the same goofy weights. And to me, the weights are the biggest problem. Did that go in all the way? Turn it, there, right? The weights are what wears out, and that's what the one time I pushed my bike, immigrant gap, halfway between Reno and San Jose. I ended up, thankfully, a trucker took pity and put me in the back of a 40-foot trailer, bent the kickstand over, doing driving up to Reno, but we got there. So to me, some people say, well, you know, it works, and it uses your weights. This will probably go on eBay. It's, I don't think it's ever been used. Let me look. No, it's got some marks here. So this might be used, might not be. So, no, I'm sorry. If I'm going to go electronic, I don't want any weights. You see that Dyna that I'll try out and report to you in later shows. This is a Crane HI4. And I'll have to go look. It's got race, you know, it's got switches to adjust stuff. It uses the, the, the same cone. 
It's got a single sensor here. A lot of these, you know, you can do dual fire, single fire, if you want to have two coils and individual coils. Harleys don't rev. I really don't see why you need two ignition coils and one ohm coils and all this stuff, right? I've got the coils stacked here. You can maybe see them on the front camera. Stock, stock, late model stock. It's kind of boxy. Can you see it? It's probably too big like this, right? This is one kind of aftermarket. Here's a crane. High intensity dual fire. Here is, yeah, dual fire. That's when you fire both cylinders at once. Here's a Dyna. You can measure the resistance. I think, I think a old factory coil is like five ohms, 12, 12 volts. The really early stuff mount on the side, they can be six volt coils. So you got that problem to deal with too. A friend said you can use a six volt or 12 volt car ignition coil if you put a pair of them in. I gotta believe that'll tear up the points. So I wanted to show you this. I guess I can try it over the next couple of years. I got time. Here is, I should get these out of the bag. Huh? This is, I think, a CompuFire. Programmable advanced HDE3, there it is. RPM limits, advanced curve. Same thing is you want as much advanced as soon as you can get it. A lot of that curve setting is how quick the advance comes on. Sporces with this crappy flame front and this horrible piston shape. This Dyna, I think this is the Dyna that might be out in, in the 77. I had a Dyna that may have blown up my bike, but that would be my fault because I probably adjusted it just Oh, it, it idles nice and I can kick start it. It doesn't kick back. So I may not have had that 40, 45 degrees of advance, right? I didn't read the manual, get the timing mark in the hole, right? So the, like I say, on my 77, I'm back to mechanical points. Just maybe one day I'll try that electronic one, but the mechanical points will go in the tool bag in the back of that bike and with all the tools that I need to switch over on the side of the road because I'm an electronics guy and I don't trust electronics. Okay, bonus two. I wanted to show you my stash of spark plug wires. These are those things, knowledges, I forget, where you run this shield and it's supposed to put a whole bunch more energy. I'm an electronics guy. I really doubt that's, I mean, if it worked as good as they said, every car on earth would have it. So I will, I have a test setup, right, where I can spin things. I could spin uh, one of these distributors especially, or maybe even figure out how to spin a cam motor and try different coils. And I've got the test equipment to actually measure thousands of volts and see how a spark looks. It's supposed to prolong the spark. Otherwise, just a normal bag of good stuff. I wanted to show you this analogy. I can't remember the name. I'll put a banner. All right, back to the show. Uh, last thing, the more, once you get these weights, you know, inspected and there's stainless steel ones and there's ones with little needle bearings and I haven't tried those yet. There's one, I noticed the Harley in their factory parts book, they call out one that's Teflon coated and they give a part number for that. Maybe that's still available, probably 200 bucks these days. After this problem with the weights egging out, banging into the back of the, the plate, the condenser, right? This guy right here, whether it's in a magneto or whether it's in here, or it's a capacitor. And like my electronics buddies say, it's always a capacitor. That's what dries out and fails. I've had them fail brand new. And that's what you call a bathtub curve, where you get early failures, because it wasn't built right. And then it works, it, once it gets past that and hasn't failed, if it's down what they call the bathtub, then it's doing good. But then as it wears out and gets old, a lot of heat, a lot of vibration, then they start failing again, you know, 10 years down the road. What I always do is, you know, run a, run a condenser, make sure it's happy, drive the bike for weeks or months, maybe a year, right? Then pull that condenser out, put in a new one, get them at any auto parts store, and then use that one. Make sure, you know, and then the used condenser you put in a tool bag, because all this stuff is easy to change with just a screwdriver. You, know, you could throw a screwdriver in your tool bag. So the condenser is a big problem, especially now because there's no modern factory automobile for decades that uses condensers, right? 
So you're at the mercy of the aftermarket, China, Mexico, wherever they make it. It's not here, I guarantee you. So the condenser is a problem. But for now, I'm going to stick with the mechanical, one wire, stock coil, stock spark plugs. I, I use fours in most of my iron sportsters. I noticed this is a 12, J12YC, which I think is the federal mogul champion. This is the champion version of a four, an HD four. I'm pretty sure. Did I got one of those? What's this? H10. I don't even know what that is. H10. And you know, here's my bin. You know me and my bins. So with a lot of this stuff, you know, goes in here so that I, when I'm working on stuff, I can go get it. So that's a quick thing about ignitions. We'll get into some detail. I'll try to get that 77. It's just a matter of a few minutes, right? Switch it over, time it. What I avoid is the timing because I don't have a good timing light. Maybe that's a new purchase. Uh, get a good timing light so that I can get it properly. That's critical. Don't just, you know, I had one mechanic. Oh, you just kind of do it by ear. It's not critical because, you know, you have so much degrees of advance. He's thinking, well, you know, 10, you know, 30, 40, 50. Just get it, you know, one, one in the factory tells you. You can start with this plate, you just put the, uh, the things in the middle. You put, you, you put the studs here in the middle of the slot and that's a good place to start. That might be to get the bike started, but then you immediately have to make sure you've got enough advance. And like I say, you can push that a little more advanced, a little more advanced until you hear the bike start pinging, but make sure you got an ear and you know what a pinging bike sounds like right? Because it'll blow pistons. Pinging can do more damage than, than retarded. You can get away with a retarded a little bit. I did on that 79 for years, but I did a haul down to Hollister, some bike run, coming back. I don't think it was anything about the Dyna ignition itself. It was that I didn't take care in setting it and making sure it's advanced. So that's the big warning. Meanwhile, I'll get out of your hair. Thanks for listening. Hope you learned something. Sportster Paul, we'll catch you next time. We'll keep working on that. Uh, I'm waiting for a tool on the 82 to get the Timken bearing pushed out. So give you an update on that next time. All right, catch you next time.